Tidal acceleration is an effect of the tidal forces between an orbiting natural satellite e.g. the Moon, and the primary planet that it orbits e.g. Earth. The acceleration causes a gradual recession of a satellite in a prograde orbit away from the primary, and a corresponding slowdown of the primary's rotation. The process eventually leads to tidal locking, usually of the smaller first, and later the larger body. The Earth-Moon system is the best studied case. The similar process of tidal deceleration occurs for satellites that have an orbital period that is shorter than the primary's rotational period, or that orbit in a retrograde direction. The naming is somewhat confusing, because the speed of the satellite relative to the body it orbits is decreased as a result of tidal acceleration, and increased as a result of tidal deceleration. Earth-Moon system Topic. Discovery history of the secular acceleration Edmund Halley was the first to suggest, in 1695, that the mean motion of the Moon was apparently getting faster, by comparison with ancient eclipse observations, but he gave no data. It was not yet known in Halley's time that what is actually occurring includes a slowing down of Earth's rate of rotation, see also ephemeris time, history. When measured as a function of mean solar time rather than uniform time, the effect appears as a positive acceleration. In 1749 Richard Dunthorne confirmed Halley's suspicion after re-examining ancient records, and produced the first quantitative estimate for the size of this apparent effect, a centurial rate of plus 1.0 arcseconds in lunar longitude, which is a surprisingly accurate result for its time, not differing greatly from values assessed later, e.g. in 1786 by de Lalande, and to compare with values from about 10 inches to nearly 13 inches being derived about a century later. Later, Pierre Simon Laplace produced in 1786 a theoretical analysis giving a basis on which the Moon's mean motion should accelerate in response to perturbational changes in the eccentricity of the orbit of Earth around the Sun. Laplace's initial computation accounted for the whole effect, thus seeming to tie up the theory neatly with both modern and ancient observations. However, in 1854, John Couch Adams caused the question to be reopened by finding an error in Laplace's computations. It turned out that only about half of the Moon's apparent acceleration could be accounted for on Laplace's basis by the change in Earth's orbital eccentricity. Adam's finding provoked a sharp astronomical controversy that lasted some years, but the correctness of his result, agreed upon by other mathematical astronomers including C. E. Delany, was eventually accepted. The question depended on correct analysis of the lunar motions, and received a further complication with another discovery, around the same time, that another significant long-term perturbation that had been calculated for the Moon supposedly due to the action of Venus was also in error, was found on re-examination to be almost negligible, and practically had to disappear from the theory. A part of the answer was suggested independently in the 1860s by Delany and by William Farrell. Tidal retardation of Earth's rotation rate was lengthening the unit of time and causing a lunar acceleration that was only apparent. It took some time for the astronomical community to accept the reality and the scale of tidal effects. But eventually it became clear that three effects are involved, when measured in terms of mean solar time. Beside the effects of perturbational changes in Earth's orbital eccentricity, as found by Laplace and corrected by Adams, there are two tidal effects a combination first suggested by Emmanuel Lies. First there is a real retardation of the Moon's angular rate of orbital motion, due to tidal exchange of angular momentum between Earth and Moon. This increases the Moon's angular momentum around Earth and moves the Moon to a higher orbit with a lower orbital speed. Secondly, there is an apparent increase in the Moon's angular rate of orbital motion when measured in terms of mean solar time. This arises from Earth's loss of angular momentum and the consequent increase in length of day. <laughs> <laughs> effects of Moon's gravity 
Because the Moon's mass is a considerable fraction of that of Earth about 1 to 81, the two bodies can be regarded as a double planet system, rather than as a planet with a satellite. The plane of the Moon's orbit around Earth lies close to the plane of Earth's orbit around the Sun the ecliptic, rather than in the plane perpendicular to the axis of rotation of Earth the equator, as is usually the case with planetary satellites. The mass of the Moon is sufficiently large, and it is sufficiently close, to raise tides in the matter of Earth. In particular, the water of the oceans bulges out towards and away from the Moon. The average tidal bulge is synchronized with the Moon's orbit, and Earth rotates under this tidal bulge in just over a day. However, Earth's rotation drags the position of the tidal bulge ahead of the position directly under the Moon. As a consequence, there exists a substantial amount of mass in the bulge that is offset from the line through the centers of Earth and the Moon. Because of this offset, a portion of the gravitational pull between Earth's tidal bulges and the Moon is not parallel to the Earth-Moon line, i.e. there exists a torque between Earth and the Moon. Since the bulge nearer the Moon pulls more strongly on it than the bulge further away, this torque boosts the Moon in its orbit and slows the rotation of Earth. As a result of this process, the mean solar day, which is nominally 86,400 seconds long, is actually getting longer when measured in SI seconds with stable atomic clocks. The SI second, when adopted, was already a little shorter than the current value of the second of mean solar time. The small difference accumulates over time, which leads to an increasing difference between our clock time, universal time on the one hand, and atomic time and ephemeris time on the other hand, see delta t. This led to the introduction of the leap second in 1972 to compensate for differences in the basis for time standardization. In addition to the effect of the ocean tides, there is also a tidal acceleration due to flexing of Earth's crust, but this accounts for only about 4% of the total effect when expressed in terms of heat dissipation. If other effects were ignored, tidal acceleration would continue until the rotational period of Earth matched the orbital period of the Moon. At that time, the Moon would always be overhead of a single fixed place on Earth, such a situation already exists in the Pluto Charon system. However, the slowdown of Earth's rotation is not occurring fast enough for the rotation to lengthen to a month before other effects make this irrelevant. About 1 to 1.5 billion years from now, the continual increase of the Sun's radiation will likely cause Earth's oceans to vaporize, removing the bulk of the tidal friction and acceleration. Even without this, the slowdown to a month-long day would still not have been completed by 4.5 billion years from now when the Sun will probably evolve into a red giant and likely destroy both Earth and the Moon. Tidal acceleration is one of the few examples in the dynamics of the solar system of a so-called secular perturbation of an orbit, i.e. a perturbation that continuously increases with time and is not periodic. Up to a high order of approximation, mutual gravitational perturbations between major or minor planets only cause periodic variations in their orbits, that is, parameters oscillate between maximum and minimum values. The tidal effect gives rise to a quadratic term in the equations, which leads to unbounded growth. In the mathematical theories of the planetary orbits that form the basis of ephemerides, quadratic and higher order secular terms do occur, but these are mostly Taylor expansions of very long time periodic terms. The reason that tidal effects are different is that unlike distant gravitational perturbations, friction is an essential part of tidal acceleration, and leads to permanent loss of energy from the dynamic system in the form of heat. In other words, we do not have a Hamiltonian system here. Topic: <inaudible> Angular momentum and energy. The gravitational torque between the moon and the tidal bulge of Earth causes the moon to be constantly promoted to a slightly higher orbit and Earth to be decelerated in its rotation. As in any physical process within an isolated system, total energy and angular momentum are conserved. 
Effectively, energy and angular momentum are transferred from the rotation of Earth to the orbital motion of the Moon. However, most of the energy lost by Earth, minus 3.321 terawatts, is converted to heat by frictional losses in the oceans and their interaction with the solid Earth, and only about 1/30th plus 0.121 terawatts is transferred to the Moon. The Moon moves farther away from Earth plus 38.247 plus or minus 0.004 mm, y, so its potential energy in Earth's gravity well increases. It stays in orbit, and from Kepler's third law it follows that its angular velocity actually decreases, so the tidal action on the Moon actually causes an angular deceleration, i.e. a negative acceleration minus 25.858 plus or minus 0.003, century 2, of its rotation around Earth. The actual speed of the Moon also decreases. Although its kinetic energy decreases, its potential energy increases by a larger amount. The rotational angular momentum of Earth decreases and consequently the length of the day increases. The net tide raised on Earth by the Moon is dragged ahead of the Moon by Earth's much faster rotation. Tidal friction is required to drag and maintain the bulge ahead of the Moon, and it dissipates the excess energy of the exchange of rotational and orbital energy between Earth and the Moon as heat. If the friction and heat dissipation were not present, the Moon's gravitational force on the tidal bulge would rapidly within two days, bring the tide back into synchronization with the Moon, and the Moon would no longer recede. Most of the dissipation occurs in a turbulent bottom boundary layer in shallow seas such as the European Shelf around the British Isles, the Patagonian Shelf off Argentina, and the Bering Sea. The dissipation of energy by tidal friction averages about 3.75 terawatts, of which 2.5 terawatts are from the principal M2 lunar component and the remainder from other components, both lunar and solar. An equilibrium tidal bulge does not really exist on Earth because the continents do not not allow this mathematical solution to take place. Oceanic tides actually rotate around the ocean basins as vast gyres around several amphidromic points where no tide exists. The Moon pulls on each individual undulation as Earth rotates. Some undulations are ahead of the Moon, others are behind it, whereas still others are on either side. The bulges that actually do exist for the Moon to pull on and which pull on the Moon are the net result of integrating the actual undulations over all the world's oceans. Earth's net or equivalent equilibrium tide has an amplitude of only 3.23 cm, which is totally swamped by oceanic tides that can exceed 1 m. Historical evidence This mechanism has been working for 4.5 billion years, since oceans first formed on Earth. There is geological and paleontological evidence that Earth rotated faster and that the Moon was closer to Earth in the remote past. Tidal rhythmites are alternating layers of sand and silt laid down offshore from estuaries having great tidal flows. Daily, monthly and seasonal cycles can be found in the deposits. This geological record is consistent with these conditions 620 million years ago, the day was 21.9 plus or minus 0.4 hours, and there were 13.1 plus or minus 0.1 synodic month per year and 400 plus or minus 7 solar days per year. The average recession rate of the Moon between then and now has been 2.17 plus or minus 0.31 cm per year, which is about half the present rate. The present high rate may be due to near resonance between natural ocean frequencies and tidal frequencies. Topic. Quantitative description of the Earth-Moon case The motion of the Moon can be followed with an accuracy of a few centimeters by lunar laser ranging LLR. Laser pulses are bounced off mirrors on the surface of the Moon, emplaced during the Apollo missions of 1969 to 1972 and by Lunokhod 2 in 1973. Measuring the return time of the pulse yields a very accurate measure of the distance. These measurements are fitted to the equations of motion. 
This yields numerical values for the Moon's secular deceleration, i.e. negative acceleration, in longitude and the rate of change of the semi-major axis of the Earth-Moon ellipse. From the period 1972-2012, the results are minus 25.82 plus or minus 0.03 arcsecond, century 2 in ecliptic longitude, plus 38.08 plus or minus 0.04 mm per year in the mean Earth-Moon distance This is consistent with results from satellite laser ranging SLR, a similar technique applied to artificial satellites orbiting Earth, which yields a model for the gravitational field of Earth, including that of the tides. The model accurately predicts the changes in the motion of the Moon. Finally, ancient observations of solar eclipses give fairly accurate positions for the Moon at those moments. Studies of these observations give results consistent with the value quoted above. The other consequence of tidal acceleration is the deceleration of the rotation of Earth. The rotation of Earth is somewhat erratic on all time scales from hours to centuries due to various causes. The small tidal effect cannot be observed in a short period, but the cumulative effect on Earth's rotation is measured with a stable clock ephemeris time, atomic time of a shortfall of even a few milliseconds every day becomes readily noticeable in a few centuries. Since some event in the remote past, more days and hours have passed as measured in full rotations of Earth universal time than would be measured by stable clocks calibrated to the present, longer length of the day ephemeris time. This is known as delta T. Recent values can be obtained from the International Earth Rotation and Reference Systems Service IERS. A table of the actual length of the day in the past few centuries is also available. From the observed change in the moon's orbit, the corresponding change in the length of the day can be computed. Plus 2.3 milliseconds century however from historical records over the past 2700 years the following average value is found plus 1.70 plus or minus 0 05 ms century the corresponding cumulative value as a parabola having a coefficient of t2 time in centuries squared of delta t equals plus 3 1s, century 2 opposing the tidal deceleration of Earth as a mechanism that is in fact accelerating the rotation. Earth is not a sphere, but rather an ellipsoid that is flattened at the poles. SLR has shown that this flattening is decreasing. The explanation is that during the Ice Age large masses of ice collected at the poles, and depressed the underlying rocks. The ice mass started disappearing over 10,000 years ago, but Earth's crust is still not in hydrostatic equilibrium and is still rebounding the relaxation time is estimated to be about 4,000 years. As a consequence, the polar diameter of Earth increases, and the equatorial diameter decreases Earth's volume must remain the same. This means that mass moves closer to the rotation axis of Earth, and that Earth's moment of inertia decreases. This process alone leads to an increase of the rotation rate phenomenon of a spinning figure skater who spins ever faster as they retract their arms. From the observed change in the moment of inertia the acceleration of rotation can be computed. The average value over the historical period must have been about minus 0.6 milliseconds, century. This largely explains the historical observations. Equals Topic. Other cases of tidal acceleration Equals. Most natural satellites of the planets undergo tidal acceleration to some degree usually small, except for the two classes of tidally decelerated bodies. In most cases, however, the effect is small enough that even after billions of years most satellites will not actually be lost. The effect is probably most pronounced for Mars's second moon Deimos, which may become an Earth-crossing asteroid after it leaks out of Mars's grip. The effect also arises between different components in a binary star. <laughs> Tidal deceleration This comes in two varieties. 
Mercury and Venus are believed to have no satellites chiefly because any hypothetical satellite would have suffered deceleration long ago and crashed into the planets due to the very slow rotation speeds of both planets. In addition, Venus also has retrograde rotation. Topic: Theory Topic. Size of the tidal bulge Neglecting axial tilt, the tidal force a satellite such as the Moon exerts on a planet such as Earth can be described by the variation of its gravitational force over the distance from it, when this force is considered as applied to a unit mass d m delta f delta R equals minus two G M D M R three Display style frac delta F delta R equals minus two frac G M D M R carrot three where g is the universal gravitational constant, m is the satellite mass and r is the distance between the satellite and the planet. Thus the satellite creates a disturbing potential on the planet, whose difference between the planet center and the closest or farthest point to the satellite as delta v equals 2 g m d m a 2 r 3 display style delta 5 equals 2 frac g m d m a caret 2 r caret 3 where a is the planet radius the size of the tidal bulge created on the planet can be estimated as roughly the ratio between this disturbing potential and the planet surface gravity h approximately equals delta V G M D M A two equals two M A four M R three Display style H approximately frac delta five G M D M a carrot two equals two frac M a carrot four M R carrot three. A more exact calculation gives H equals fifteen eight M a four M R three. Display style h equals frac fifteen eight frac m a carrot four m r carrot three. Assuming we neglect a second order effect due to rigidity of the planet material. For the Moon Earth system, m equals seven point three x one o two two kilogram, m equals six by one thousand twenty four kilograms, a equals six point four x one hundred six m, r equals three point eight x one hundred eight. This gives zero point seven meters, close to the true value for ocean tides height, roughly one meter. Note that two bulges are formed, one centered roughly around the point nearest to the satellite and the other centered roughly around the point farthest from it. Topic. Torque Due to planet rotation, the bulges lag somewhat behind the planet-satellite axis, which creates an angle alpha display style alpha between the two. The size of this lag angle depends on inertia and much more importantly on dissipation forces e.g. friction exerted on the bulge. The satellite applies different forces on the close and far bulges. The difference is roughly delta F delta R display style delta F delta R times the planet diameter, where we replace the unit mass in the calculation above with the approximate mass of each bulge pi rho a 2 h 
display style pi rho a caret 2 h where rho is the mass density of the bulge delta f approximately equals delta f delta r 2 a cos alpha equals 4 pi g m rho o 3 h r 3 cos alpha Display style delta f approximately frac delta f delta r c d o t two a c d o t cos alpha equals four pi frac g m rho a caret three h r caret three cos alpha, where we took into consideration the effect of the lag angle alpha. Display style alpha. In order to get a rough estimation for the torque exerted by the satellite on the planet, we need to multiply this difference with the lever length, which is the planet diameter, and with the sine of the lag angle, giving n approximately equals 8 pi g m rho a 4 h r 3 cos alpha sin alpha equals 4 pi g m rho a 4 h r 3 sin 2 alpha Display style n approximately eight pi frac g m rho a caret four h r caret three cos alpha sin alpha equals four pi frac g m rho a caret four h r caret three sin two alpha. A more exact calculation adds a two fifths factor due to the planet spherical form and gives n equals eight five. Pi G M Rho O four H R three Sin two Alpha Display style N equals frac eight five pi Frac G M Rho a carrot four H R carrot three Sin two Alpha Inserting the value of H found above this as N equals three Pi G M two Rho a eight M R six Sin two Alpha Display style n equals three pi frac g m caret two rho a caret eight m r caret six sin two alpha. This can be written as n equals nine four k g m two a five r six sin Two alpha display style n equals frac nine four k frac g m caret two a caret five r caret six sin two alpha, where k is a factor related that can be expressed by love numbers, taking into considerations non-uniformity in the planet mass density, corrections due to planet rigidity, neglected above, also enter here. For Earth, most of the bulge is made of sea water and has no correction for rigidity, but its mass density is 0.18 the average Earth mass density 1 gram per cc versus 5.5 grams per cc, so k approximately equals 0.18 display style k approximately 0.18 the literature uses a close value of 0 2 equals 2 k 2 
3 display style equals 2k underscore 2 3 a similar calculation can be done for the tides created on the planet by the sun here m should be replaced by the mass sun and r by the distance to the sun since alpha depends on the dissipation properties of earth it is expected to be the same for both the resulting torque is 20% that exerted by the moon topic relation of the lag angle to energy dissipation The work exerted by the satellite over the planet is created by a force F acting along the path of movement of a mass units moving in velocity U in the planet, in fact, in the bulge. Forces and locations depend on the relative angle to the planet satellite axis θ, that changes periodically with the angular momentum ω, since the force in the planet's spherical coordinate system is symmetrical in the direction towards the satellite and in the opposite direction it is outwards in both, the dependence is approximated as sinusoidal in 2 θ. Thus the force exerted on a unit mass is of the form d f t equals d f 0 cuz 2 theta equals d f 0 cuz 2 omega t Display style df t equals df underscore zero cos two theta equals df underscore zero cos two omega t, and the translation projected on the same direction as of the form she t equals she zero cos two theta minus alpha equals she 0 cuz 2 omega t minus alpha display style she t equals she underscore 0 cuz 2 theta alpha equals she underscore 0 cuz 2 omega t alpha due to the lag angle the velocity component in the direction of the force is therefore u t equals d she t d t equals minus 2 omega she 0 sin 2 theta Minus alpha display style u t equals frac d she t d t equals minus two omega she underscore zero sin two theta alpha, and so the total work exerted over a unit mass during one cycle as zero pi omega d f t u t D T equals minus two Omega D F zero she zero zero Pi Omega cuz two Omega T sin two Omega T minus alpha D T equals minus Pi D F zero she zero sin two alpha 
Display style int underscore zero carrot pi omega VEC DFT VEC U T DT equals minus two omega DF underscore zero she underscore zero int underscore zero carrot pi omega cos two omega T sin two omega T alpha DT equals pi DF underscore zero she underscore zero sin two alpha in fact, almost all of this is dissipated e.g. as friction, as explained below. Looking now at the total energy from the satellite potential in one of the bulges, this is equal to the total work performed on this in a quarter of the total angular range, i.e. from zero to maximal displacement E equals minus pi 4 omega plus Alpha Omega Alpha Omega D F T U T D T equals minus two Omega D F zero she zero minus Pi four Omega plus Alpha Omega Alpha Omega cos two Omega T sin two Omega T minus Alpha D T Display style E carrot asterisk equals int underscore pi four omega plus alpha omega carrot alpha O M E Ga VEC DF T VEC U T D T equals minus two omega DF underscore zero she underscore zero int underscore pi four omega plus alpha omega carrot alpha omega cos two omega T sin two omega T alpha D T equals minus D F zero she zero minus pi two zero cos Z plus two alpha sin Z D Z approximately equals 1 2 d f 0 she 0 Display style equals df underscore zero she underscore zero int underscore pi two carrot zero cos z plus two alpha sin z d z approximately frac one two df underscore zero she underscore zero where we have defined z equals two omega t minus alpha display style z equals two omega t alpha and approximated for small alpha in the last equality, thus neglecting it. The fraction of energy dissipated in each cycle is represented by the effective specific dissipation function, denoted by q minus 1 display style q caret minus 1 and defined as the total dissipation in one cycle divided by 2 pi e display style 2 pi e caret asterisk this gives q minus 1 equals sin 2 alpha display style q caret minus 1 equals sin 2 alpha 
The value of this is estimated as 1 13th for Earth, where the bulge is mainly liquid, 10-1 to 10-2 for the other inner planets and the Moon, where the bulge is mainly solid, and as 10-3 to 10-5 for the outer, mostly gaseous planets. With this value for Earth at hand, the torque can be calculated to be 4.4 x 1016 nm, only 13% above the measured value of 3.9 x 1016 nm. Note that in the distant past, the value of k sin 2 alpha display style k c d o t sin 2 alpha for the Earth Moon system was probably somewhat smaller. Topic: Retardation of the planet's rotation. Again neglecting axial tilt, the change over time in the planet angular momentum L is equal to the torque. L in turn is the product of the angular velocity ω with the moment of inertia I. For a spherical planet of approximately uniform mass density, I equals F M A 2 Display style i equals f m a caret two, where f is a factor depending on the planet structure. A spherical planet of uniform density has f. Topic two fifths. Zero point four. Since the angular momentum this gives d omega d t equals d l i d t equals n i equals 45 8 k g m 2 a 3 m r 6 Sin two alpha display style frac d omega d t equals frac d l i d t equals frac n i equals frac forty five eight k frac g m caret two a caret three m r caret six sin two alpha. Since the Earth density is larger at depth, its moment of inertia is somewhat smaller, with f equals 0.33, for the Earth-Moon system, taking sin 2 alpha display style sin 2 alpha of 1 13th and k equals 0.2, we get 4.5 x 10 minus 22 seconds minus 2. For a 24-hour day, this is equivalent to 17 seconds in one million year, or one hour i.e. lengthening of the day by one hour in 210 million years. Due to the additional 20% effect of the Sun, the day lengthens by one hour in approximately 180 million years. A similar calculation shows that the Earth had exerted angular momentum through tidal friction on the Moon's self-rotation, before this became tidally locked. At that period, one calculates the change in the moon angular momentum omega in the same manner as for omega above, except that m and m should be as switched, and a should be replaced by the moon radius a equals 1.7 x 106 meter. Taking sin 2 alpha display style sin 2 alpha of 10 minus 1 to 10 minus 2 as for the solid planets and k equals 1 this gives d omega dt equals 3 by 10 minus 17 minus 3 by 10 minus 18 seconds 2 for a 29.5 day long rotation period this is equivalent to 1.5 to 15 minutes in one year or one day in 102 to 103 years Thus in astronomical timescales, the Moon became tidally locked very fast. Effect on the satellite motion around the planet Equals 
Due to conservation of angular momentum, a torque of the same size as the one exerted by the satellite and of opposite direction as exerted by the planet on the satellite motion around the planet. Another effect, which will not be dealt with here, is the changes in the eccentricity and inclination of the orbit. The moment of inertia of this motion is mr2. However now r itself depends on the angular velocity which we denote here and, according to Newtonian analysis of orbital motion, r 3 n 2 equals g m display style r caret 3 n caret 2 equals g m thus the satellite orbit angular momentum l satisfies neglecting eccentricity l equals m r 2 n equals m g m r 1 2 display style l equals m r caret 2 n equals m sqrt gm r caret 1 half n equals d l d t equals 1 2 m g m r minus 1 2 d r d t display style n equals frac d l d t equals frac 1 2 m s q r t g m r caret minus 1 half frac doctor d t d R D T equals two R one two M G M N equals nine two K G M M A five R eleven two sin two alpha display style frac doctor dt equals frac two r caret one half m s q r t g m n equals frac nine two k s q r t frac g m frac m a caret five r caret eleven halves sin two alpha additionally since n equals G M R minus three two display style N equals SQRT GM R carrot minus three halves we have D N D T equals minus three two G M R minus five two D R D T equals twenty seven four K G M A five R eight sin two alpha display style frac dn dt equals frac 3 2 sqrt gm r caret minus 5 halves frac doctor dt equals frac 27 4 kilogram frac m a caret 5 r caret 8 sin 2 alpha note that assuming all rotations are on the same direction and omega greater than omega as time passes the angular momentum of the planet decreases and hence that of the satellite orbit increases due to its relation with the planet satellite distance the latter increases so the angular velocity of the satellite orbit decreases for the earth moon system drive dt gives 1.2 x 10 minus 9 meter per second or 3.7 centimeters per year this is a 1% increase in the Earth-Moon distance in 100 million years. 
dn dt is 1.3 x 10 minus 23 seconds minus 2, and for a period of 29.5 days is equivalent to 7 minutes in 1 million year, or 1 day i.e. lengthening of the lunar period in 1 day in 210 million years. Topic. Effect of the Sun The Sun-planet system has two tidal friction effects. One effect is that the Sun creates a tidal friction in the planet, which decreases its spinning angular momentum and hence also increases its orbital angular momentum around the Sun, hence increasing its distance and reducing its angular velocity assuming the orbital angular velocity of the Sun is smaller than that of the planet spinning, otherwise directions of change are opposite. If m s is the sun mass and d is the distance to it, then the rate of change of d is given, similar to the above calculation, by d d d t equals 2 d 1 2 m g m s n s equals 9 2 k g m s 3 2 a 5 m d 11 2 sin 2 alpha Display style frac d d d t equals frac two d caret one half m s q r t g m underscore s n underscore s equals frac nine two k frac s q r t g m underscore s caret three halves a caret five m d caret eleven halves sin two alpha. The planet orbital angular velocity omega s then changes as d omega s d t equals minus 3 2 g m s d minus 5 2 d d d t equals 27 4 K G M S two A five M D eight Sin two Alpha Display style frac D omega underscore S D T equals frac three two S Q R T G M underscore S D carrot minus five halves frac D D D T equals frac twenty seven four K frac G M underscore S carrot two a carrot five M D carrot eight sin two alpha for the Earth Sun system, this gives 1 by 10 minus 13 meters per second, or 3 meters in 1 million year. This is a 1% increase in the Earth Sun distance in half a billion years. The decrease in the Earth orbital angular momentum is 2 by 10 minus 31 seconds 2, or equivalently for a one year period, one second in one billion year. Another, relatively negligible, effect is that the planet creates tidal friction in the Sun. This creates a change in the distance to the Sun and the orbital angular velocity around it, as it does for the satellite in the satellite planet system. Using the same equations but now for the planet Sun system, with a standing for the Sun radius 7 by 108 meter, we have d d d t equals 9 2 k S G M S M A S five D eleven two Sin two Alpha S 
Display style frac d d d t equals frac nine two k underscore s s q r t frac g m underscore s frac m a underscore s carrot five d carrot eleven halves sin two alpha underscore s d omega s d t equals twenty seven four K S G M A S five D eight Sin two Alpha S Display style frac d omega underscore s d t equals frac twenty seven four k underscore s g frac m a underscore s carrot five d carrot eight sin two alpha underscore s, where k s is a factor, presumably very small, due to the non-uniformity of mass densities of the sun. Assuming this factor times sin two alpha s to be not larger than what is found in the outer planets, i.e. 10 minus 3 to 10 minus 5. We have a negligible contribution from this effect. Topic: A detailed calculation for the Earth-Moon system. Topic: Potential perturbation created by the Moon on Earth. The potential per mass unit that the Moon creates on Earth, whose center is located at distance r0 from the Moon along the z-axis in the Earth-Moon rotating frame of reference, and in coordinates centered at the Earth center, is w equals minus g m r minus r 0 z Carrot plus one two Omega two R minus R one Z carrot two Display style cal W equals frac GM VEC R R underscore zero hat Z plus frac one two Omega carrot two VEC R R underscore one hat Z carrot two where R one Display style R underscore one is the distance from the Moon to the center of mass of the Earth, Moon system, omega is the angular velocity of the Earth around this point. The same as the lunar orbital angular velocity. The second term is the effective potential due to the centrifugal force of the Earth. We expand the potential in Taylor series around the point. The linear term must vanish, at least on average in time since otherwise the force on the earth center would be non vanishing thus w equals 1 2 omega 2 x 2 plus y 2 plus z minus r 1 2 Minus G M X two plus Y two plus Z minus R zero two Display style cal W equals frac one two omega carrot two left x carrot two plus y carrot two plus Z R underscore one carrot two right frac GM SQRT x carrot two plus y carrot two plus Z R underscore zero carrot two equals C O N S T plus one two Omega two X two plus Y 
2 plus z 2 minus g m r 0 3 z 2 minus 1 2 x 2 plus y 2 plus g m r 0 5 plus Display style equals const plus frac one two omega carrot two x carrot two plus y carrot two plus z carrot two frac gm r underscore zero carrot three left z carrot two frac one two x carrot two plus y carrot two right plus frac gm r underscore zero carrot five left dots right plus dots moving to spherical coordinates this gives W equals C O N S T plus one two Omega two R two minus G M R two R zero Three one two three cos two theta minus one plus G M R zero five plus Display style cal w equals const plus frac one two omega carrot two r carrot two frac g m r carrot two r underscore zero carrot three frac one two left three cos carrot two theta minus one right plus frac g m r underscore zero carrot five left dots right plus dots equals c o n S T plus one two Omega two R two minus G M N equals two infinity R N R zero N plus one P N cos theta Display style equals const plus frac one two omega carrot two r carrot two gm sum underscore n equals two carrot n f t frac r carrot n r underscore zero carrot n plus one P underscore n cos theta where P N Cos theta display style p underscore n cos theta are the Legendre polynomials. The constant term has no mechanical importance, while the r two display style r caret two causes a fixed dilation and is not directly involved in creating a torque. Thus, we focus on the other terms whose sum we denote. W two plus display style cal W underscore two plus and mainly on the P two cos theta display style P underscore two cos theta term which is the largest as R R zero Display style frac r r underscore zero is at most the ratio of the Earth radius to its distance from the Moon, which is less than two percent. Topic: Form of the bulge response to a perturbative potential. We treat the potential created by the Moon as a perturbation to the Earth's gravitational potential. 
thus the height on earth at angles theta display style theta phi display style var phi is r theta phi equals a plus delta theta phi Display style r theta var phi equals a plus delta theta var phi, where delta a display style delta l l a, and the amplitude of delta is proportional to the perturbation. We expand delta in Legendre polynomials, where the constant term, which stands for dilation, will be ignored as we are not interested in it. Thus, delta theta phi equals n equals 1 infinity delta n p n cuz theta display style delta theta var phi equals sum underscore n equals 1 caret n a t delta underscore n p underscore n cuz theta where delta n are unknown constants we would like to find. We assume for the moment total equilibrium, as well as no rigidity on Earth e.g. as in a liquid Earth. Therefore, its surface is equipotential, and so V E R theta phi plus W 2 plus R theta Phi display style v underscore e left r theta var phi right plus w underscore two plus left r theta var phi right is constant where v e r display style v underscore e r is the Earth potential per unit mass since delta is proportional to w two plus display style w underscore 2 plus which is much smaller than ve this can be expanded in delta dropping nonlinear terms we have c o n s t equals v e r theta phi plus w 2 plus r theta phi approximately equals v e a plus v e a delta theta phi plus w 2 plus Display style const equals v underscore e left r theta var phi right plus cal w underscore two plus left r theta var phi right approximately v underscore e a plus v underscore e caret prime a delta theta var phi plus cal w underscore two plus a c o n s t equals v e a n equals 1 infinity delta n p n cos theta minus g m n equals 2 infinity a n r 0 n plus 1 p n cos theta 
display style const equals v underscore e caret prime a sum underscore n equals one caret n a t delta underscore n p underscore n cos theta g m sum underscore n equals two caret n a t frac a caret n r underscore zero caret n plus one p underscore n cos theta note that v e r d v e r d r display style v underscore e caret prime r equiv d v underscore east r doctor is the force per unit mass from earth's gravity ie v e a display style v underscore e caret prime a is just the gravitational acceleration g since the legendre polynomials are orthogonal we may equate their coefficients and both sides of the equation giving delta 1 equals 0 display style delta underscore 1 equals 0 delta n equals g m a n r 0 n plus 1 v e a equals g m a n r 0 n plus 1 g m a 2 equals m a n plus 2 m r 0 n plus 1 Display style delta underscore n equals frac g m a caret n r underscore zero caret n plus one v underscore e caret prime a equals frac g m a caret n r underscore zero caret n plus one g m a caret two equals frac ma caret n plus two mr underscore zero caret n plus one n two Display style n g e q two. Thus, the height is the ratio between the perturbation potential and the force from the perturbated potential. Topic: Form of the bulge two, the deformation creating a perturbative potential. So far, we have neglected the fact that the deformation itself creates a perturbative potential. In order to account for this, we may calculate this perturbative potential, recalculate the deformation and continue so iteratively. Let us assume the mass density is uniform. Since delta is much smaller than A, the deformation can be treated as a thin shell added to the mass of the Earth, where the shell has a surface mass density rho delta and can also be negative, with rho being the mass density. If mass density is not uniform, then the change of shape of the planet creates differences in mass distribution in all depth, and this has to be taken into account as well. Since the gravitation potential has the same form as the electric potential, this is a simple problem in electrostatics. For the analogous electrostatic problem, the potential created by the shell has the form n equals 0 infinity a n r n p n cos Theta display style sum underscore n equals zero caret n a t underscore n r caret n p underscore n cos theta r a display style r l e q a n equals zero infinity a n a two n plus 1 r n plus 1 p 
n cos theta display style sum underscore n equals zero caret infty a underscore n frac a caret two n plus one r caret n plus one p underscore n cos theta r o display style r g e q a where the surface charge density is proportional to the discontinuity in the grad iant of the potential sigma theta equals epsilon 0 n equals 0 infinity 2 n plus 1 a n a n minus 1 p n cos theta Display style sigma theta equals var epsilon underscore zero sum underscore n equals zero carrot n a t two n plus one a underscore n a carrot n one p underscore n cos theta epsilon zero display style var epsilon underscore zero is the vacuum permittivity a constant relevant to electrostatics related to the equation u R equals one four pi epsilon zero q two r display style u r equals frac one four pi var epsilon underscore zero frac q caret two r. The analogous equation in gravity is u r equals g m 2 r display style u r equals g frac m caret 2 r so if charge density is replaced with mass density epsilon 0 display style var epsilon underscore 0 should be replaced with 1 4 pi G display style frac one four pi g. Thus, in the gravitational problem, we have rho n delta n p n cos theta equals one four pi g n. 2 n plus 1 a n a n minus 1 p n cos theta Display style row sum underscore n delta underscore n p underscore n cos theta equals frac one four pi g sum underscore n two n plus one a underscore n a caret n one p underscore n cos theta. So that again due to the orthogonality of Legendre polynomials, a n equals four pi g row 2 n plus 1 a n minus 1 delta n Display style a underscore n equals four pi frac g row 2 n plus 1 a carrot n 1 delta underscore n Thus the perturbative potential per mass unit for R O display style R G E Q A is four pi G rho A N plus two N equals zero infinity one two N plus one R N plus one 
delta n p n cos theta display style 4 pi g rho a caret n plus 2 sum underscore n equals 0 caret n a t frac 1 2 n plus 1 r caret n plus 1 delta underscore n p underscore n cos theta equals 3 g m a 2 n a n plus 1 2 n plus 1 r n plus 1 delta n p n cos theta Display style equals three frac G M A carrot two sum underscore N frac a carrot N plus one two N plus one R carrot N plus one delta underscore N P underscore N cos theta. Note that since Earth's mass density is in fact not uniform, this result must be multiplied by a factor that is roughly the ratio of the bulge mass density and the average Earth mass, approximately zero point one eight. The actual factor is somewhat larger, since there is some deformation in the deeper solid layers of Earth as well. Let us denote this factor by x. Rigidity also lowers x, though this is less relevant for most of the bulge, made of sea water. The deformation was created by the a perturbative potential of size w 2 plus a equals g m a 2 delta n p n cos theta display style cal w underscore 2 plus a equals frac g m a caret 2 delta underscore n p underscore n cos theta thus for each coefficient of p n cos Theta display style p underscore n cos theta. The ratio of the original perturbative potential to that secondarily created by the deformation is c n three x two n plus one display style c underscore n equiv frac three x two n plus one with x equals 1 for perfectly a non-rigid uniform planet. This secondary perturbative potential creates another deformation which again creates a perturbative potential and so on ad infinitum, so that the total deformation is of the size n k equals 0 infinity c n k h n p n cos theta equals n 1 1 minus c n delta n p n cos theta Display style sum underscore n sum underscore k equals zero carrot n a t c underscore n carrot k h underscore n p underscore n cos theta equals sum underscore n frac one one c underscore n delta underscore n p underscore n cos theta. For each mode, the ratio to delta n, the naive estimation of the deformation is one one minus c n display style frac 1 1 c underscore n and is denoted as love number h n display style h underscore n for a perfectly a non-rigid uniform planet e.g. a liquid earth of non-compressible liquid this is equal to 2 n plus 1 2 
display style frac 2 n plus 1 2 and for the main mode of n equals 2 it is 5 halves Similarly, nth mode of the tidal perturbative potential per unit mass created by Earth at r equals a is the Love number k n times the corresponding term in the original lunar tidal perturbative potential, where for a uniform mass density, zero rigidity planet k n is k n equals k equals one infinity c n k equals c n 1 minus c n display style k underscore n equals sum underscore k equals 1 caret n a t c underscore n caret k equals frac c underscore n 1 c underscore n for a perfectly a non-rigid uniform planet e.g. a liquid earth of non-compressible liquid, this is equal to 3 halves. In fact, for the main mode of n equals 2, the real value for earth is a fifth of it, namely k2. Topic 0.3 which fits c2 0. 0.23 or x equals 0.38, roughly twice the density ratios of 0.18 equals Topic. Calculation of the torque equals Instead of calculating the torque exerted by the Moon on the Earth deformation, we calculate the reciprocal torque exerted by the Earth deformation on the Moon, both must be equal. The potential created by the Earth bulge is the perturbative potential we have discussed above. Per unit mass, for R equals A, this is the same as the lunar perturbative potential creating the bulge, with each mode multiplied by Kn, with the n equals 2 mode far dominating the potential. Thus at R equals A the bulge perturbative potential per unit mass is U R equals A theta equals minus g m n equals 2 infinity k n a n r 0 n plus 1 p n cuz Theta display style cal u r equals a theta equals g m sum underscore n equals two caret n a t k underscore n frac a caret n r underscore zero caret n plus one p underscore n cos theta. Since the n the mode it drops off as r n plus one for r greater than a, we have outside Earth u r theta equals minus g m n equals 2 infinity k n a n r 0 n plus 1 a n plus 1 R N plus one P N cos theta Display style cal u r theta equals g m sum underscore n equals two carrot n a t k underscore n frac a carrot n r underscore zero carrot n plus one frac a carrot n plus one r carrot n plus one p underscore n cos theta. However, the bulge actually lags at an angle alpha with respect to the direction to the moon due to Earth's rotation. Thus, we have u equals minus g m n equals 2 infinity k n 
a two n plus one r zero n plus one r n plus one p n cos theta minus alpha Display style cal u equals gm sum underscore n equals two carrot in a t k underscore n frac a carrot two n plus one r underscore zero carrot n plus one r carrot n plus one p underscore n left cos theta alpha right. The moon is at r equals r zero theta equals zero. Thus, the potential per unit mass at the moon is u r equals r 0 theta equals 0 equals minus g m n equals 2 infinity k n a 2 n plus 1 R zero two N plus two P N cos alpha approximately equals minus G M K two A five R zero six P two cos alpha Display style cal U R equals R underscore zero theta equals zero equals GM sum underscore N equals two carrot in a T K underscore N frac A carrot two N plus one R underscore zero carrot two N plus two P underscore N left cos alpha right approximately GM K underscore two frac a carrot five R underscore zero carrot six P underscore two cos alpha equals minus G M K two A five R zero six one two three cos two alpha minus one Display style equals GMK underscore two frac a carrot five R underscore zero carrot six C D O T frac one two three cos carrot two alpha minus one. Neglecting eccentricity and axial tilt, we get the torque exerted by the bulge on the moon by multiplying U Display style cal U with the moon's mass M, and differentiating with respect to theta at the moon location. This is equivalent to differentiating m u r equals r zero theta equals zero. Display style m cal u r equals r underscore zero theta equals zero with respect to alpha and gives n equals m D U R equals R zero theta equals zero D alpha equals three two G M two K two A five R zero six sin two alpha 
Display style n equals m frac d cal u r equals r underscore zero theta equals zero d alpha equals frac three two g m carrot two k underscore two frac a carrot five r underscore zero carrot six c d o t sin two alpha. This is the same formula used above, with r equals r zero and k. They're defined as two k two thirds. See also Tidal locking Tidal force Tides Tidal heating